Hi guys, it's Brent with 360 Farms again. Uh, we want to do another video about growing elderberries. Uh, we're set up today inside of our store here at the farm. The weather outside is a little disagreeable today. I'd like to talk a little bit about uh, planting an elderberry or berries. I'd like to talk a little bit about site selection, where to plant, how to plant, and when to plant. And I always like to do start out with this on my videos is um, I, I'm only giving you based on my experience what we've been, what's been successful for us. Um, we're now 10 years into growing Sambucus canadensis, uh, American black elder. We have right at 7,000 plants in production. Some things have worked wonderfully, way beyond our wildest dreams, and some things were an utter failure. So I want to try to share with you what has worked, tell you what's not worked. Site selection. Let's talk about where to plant your elderberries. Um, you know, I, I have this conversation a lot of times with people who are interested in growing elderberries. They say, well, the wild ones grow along tree lines, creek bottoms, fences, and things like that, where they're sheltered. And I say, yes. Think about how that plant was started. Basically, a seed was dropped by a bird. The conditions were ideal for that seed to germinate. Now, is it the best situation for you to grow your elderberries in? What we have found is that full sun is by far the best thing to grow an elderberry. And let me explain all the reasons why. There's two things that basically pollinate an elderberry plant. It is wind and insects. And you need both to get adequate pollination. So if you decide to put your elderberry plants in around shelters, other trees in other words, you're not going to get the wind pollination that you normally would if, if it was out in the open full sun. The other thing is insects. There is a myriad of insects that is involved in the pollination process of elderberries from all kinds of bees to flies, wasps, um, even true bugs, hemiptera, are involved in it. Uh, we have a phenomenal population of fireflies, lightning bugs, depending on where you live, uh, here at uh, 360 Farms, and believe it or not, they are somewhat involved in the pollination of an elderberry plant. So when you think about where to put that plant, there's a lot of things to take into consideration. You need the wind and you need the insects. So if you put an elderberry plant in close to other trees, think about the natural food chain. The insects aren't going to come in there if there's predators, birds and things like that. So you want to get the plants away from where their natural predators would be, where they feel safer. And of course you need the wind. So that pretty much covers where to put it. Uh, then you need to look at your soil types. You know, there's a lot of stuff on the internet about, oh, you need this kind of soil and that kind of soil. Uh, you see the word well-drained, and a lot of people get confused as to what that really means. The best way I can explain it is think about your septic system. If it doesn't perk, that soil's not well-drained. So a lot of times clay prevents soils from being able to drain, and I will tell you this on experience, clay is detrimental to trying to grow elderberries. Now you can have a little bit of clay. The best situation is sandy loam. It doesn't have to be a deep sandy loam. You'll hear at our farm, we've got 12 to 16 inches of real sandy loam, and then we've got a really heavy yellow clay. Our elderberries thrive here simply because elderberries have a very, very shallow root system. I told you I would tell you stories based on my experience. Several years ago, we put in a two acre patch of elderberries uh, at another location away from our farm, uh, two miles from here. And we put in right at 2,000 plants in there and I, I planted an area that was up close to a small creek or a drainage area. Most of the year it doesn't even have any water in it. The first year we got some heavy rains, that little creek backed up and flooded an area that had about 10 plants in it. And for over 48 hours those plants had three to four inches of water on them. 
guess what? They drowned. So stupid me, I decided I would replace them. It happened again the next year. I now have a spot in that field that does not have 10, maybe 12 plants in it. Because I learned a lesson. So you always want to think about, you know, what soils that you have and um, whether or not it will drain well. Um, elderberries do need a lot of water, but they don't need it all at once. You know, if you think about where elderberries have basically happened naturally, there was enough water for that seed to germinate and there was enough water for that plant to grow and mature. Very, very shallow root system. Do not forget that. Elderberries are extremely shallow. Now, the next thing, and this is probably one of the most important things that I think a lot of times is overlooked, is your soil pH. Elderberries do need an acidic environment for them to flourish, but most importantly, they need that acidic environment for proper berry chemistry. Now, elderberries and blueberries are somewhat similar in the chemistry of the berry. You know, we all want to put the tag of a superfood on blueberries because they're high in antioxidants, they're high in certain vitamins and things like that. Elderberries are exactly the same way. You know, nobody's disputing the fact that you need an acidic soil to grow blueberries. The same with elderberries. You need that. Now, here is one big difference between the two plants. Elderberries will produce in higher pH, but the problem is your berry chemistry is not what it needs to be. Everybody's high on elderberries right now for the main reason of certain compounds in elderberries. You need that acidic environment for things like antioxidants, which are acidic, uh, polyphenols, which are acidic, vitamins like vitamin C are acids. So that's something to take into consideration. Do you have the proper pH? There's easy ways to do that on a small scale. If you're only going to plant maybe two to four, maybe five plants, just blend in a bunch of pine bark mulch when you plant them and then mulch them very heavily with that same pine bark mulch because as things like pine bark, as it decomposes, it actually releases acids into the soil. So it works really, really well for small planting areas. Now, another thing about the pH is this. It is called being uh, having a palatable berry. I had a customer tell me one time about some wild elderberries that they had growing not too far away from where they lived. And they said, but the problem is those berries taste horrible. And I said, do yourself a big favor. Go do a soil test on that location. Come to find out, the soils was in the mid sevens, about 7.6. So every time after that, I've run into that situation. I've always asked them, do a soil sample on that area and we can determine why those berries don't taste very good. Now, um, let's talk about the actual planting. Um, our nursery uh, operation started about eight years ago, I think now, and one of the reasons I did that because when we first got started and you wanted to actually get involved in a large elderberry operation, this was pretty much the extent of what you could do as far as putting a large plantation in or a large orchard in. And uh, I immediately saw some problems with this in that, um, you know, the, just the sheer amount of turnaround before you got any type of harvest uh, in if you could get them to live. So um, cuttings were readily available, but anything above that was not. And I, I, I will personally tell you from my own experience, it was not a good experience for me at first. Now, some people may question you, so, well, hey, maybe you didn't know what you were doing. You know, my educational background is in plant biology. I've got a degree in chemistry also, and I've been around farming all my life. When we actually started working with these cuttings initially, we installed four and a half miles of drip tape irrigation and, and actually put a fertigation system in place with it. We just had difficulties with it. Oklahoma is not conducive to starting these out in the ground. So I saw an opportunity for some nursery business and what we decided to do was offer to the uh, consumer <laughs> uh, larger, well-rooted nursery stock. And this is our one gallon plants. I went and pulled this from the nursery operations earlier today 
And uh, this is actually a wildwood, a native Oklahoma variety. And uh, I wanted to give you an idea about planting an elderberry. Now, when somebody comes to me and they want elderberry plants, this is what they get. If you'll notice the main cutting there, it has been, since it's in the uh, nursery operation, it's been pruned at least twice more. And uh, by doing that, you're actually getting these new canes or new shoots to come out. Now, when, I tell, when people talk to me about how to plant an elderberry, this is very important. Um, I tell them, take it home, dig your hole, take this thing straight out of the pot, put it straight in the ground. Do not cut, do not spread the roots on an elderberry. And here's why. I can't tell you how many times I had people tell me, well, I planted an elderberry years ago and it literally took over everything. And my first question to them, did you spread the roots or cut the roots when you planted it? And the answer is always yes. And I said, this is your first mistake. You need to basically try to duplicate what nature is doing. And you don't want to force that plant to take off because they will. They'll put off shoots two, four feet away from where you planted that plant. You want to do it naturally and slowly for it to develop an extremely heavy, dense root mat. Let it expand on its own. Don't force it. The other thing is this, you know, if you start with a cutting, you're a minimum of two years, depending on when you start it, probably three before you get any type of noticeable harvest off of that plant. With this plant, um, you'll get a very good harvest the very next season. Now, let me explain that. And when's the best time to, to plant an elderberry? And I will tell you unequivocally, fall is by far the best time to plant an elderberry plant because if you'll put a plant in the ground this size in the fall, you will have a really nice harvest the next season. It spent all winter putting roots on, putting new shoots ready to take off spring of next year. You can put these in the ground in the spring and that's fine, but you won't get near the harvest as you would if you waited until the fall. Another thing that's really important with an elderberry, and I can't um, speak enough about water. Elderberries need a lot of water the first two years for them to get established and to be able to survive hot, dry spells. When you plant an elderberry, you want to mulch these things very heavily. This plant, I would recommend two to three inches of heavy mulch. Leave it on there because it will help keep the moisture in the ground. Make sure they have a regular drink. Don't let them dry out because they will die quickly on you. As far as amendments, uh, fertilizers and things like that, you know, there's a lot of different uh, schools of thought. Uh, here at our farm, we use nothing but foliar sprays as uh, supplements and amendments and we use natural foliar sprays. Uh, there is some uh, research out there that shows by using some pretty strong synthetics you'll uh, get a more even harvest making them more determinate. That pretty much covers everything that uh, I wanted to talk about today. The next video I would like to do uh, hopefully about variety selection. Um, there's a lot of varieties of elderberries out there. Most people aren't aware that there's all these different kinds of elderberries. And I especially want to talk about how crazy site specific a lot of elderberry varieties are. Now, what that means is this. There are a lot of varieties out there where will do wonderfully in a certain area, but you take it outside of its natural environment, they struggle to survive. There is a wide, wide variation in berry chemistry from one variety of elderberry to the next. And that's something I want to talk about. We actually carry varieties of elderberries that if you're looking for the medicinal side, the most medicinal elderberry that you can get out there, I want to direct you toward these varieties. But if you're wanting to do nothing but make jelly, guess what? There are elderberry varieties out there that are much higher in natural sugars and be a better use for things like jelly. So we're gonna talk about that next time. I hope this was informative and uh, thanks for watching.